Ladies and gentlemen, I am the one and only D. J. Storms, and I would like to welcome all of you back here to the channel, right here on YouTube.com, as of course, you already know who I am, Mr. Controversy, and the operator of the best damn Twitter handle known to mankind. This is the Lightning Flash Update Part 2, here on May 17th, 2019. And my, oh my, if you could tell by the thumbnail, I have got a lot of things I want to get off my chest. But, but, I'm not alone. Yes, uh, one brave soul decided to venture into the eye of the storm. She is a huge Sasha Banks and Bailey Mark, newest member of the DJ Storm's posse. Please help me welcome Chrissy. What's going on, Chrissy? Oh my gosh, Greg Hamilton should just quit while he's ahead. <laughs> my goodness. Oh my gosh, I've never, uh, what, what, Moro, where is Moro? Moro quit too. Oh goodness. You're putting a WWE in disarray. You're sending people home. That's what I do. Fences. Let me not, let me not. Um, hi everyone, I'm Chrissy. Um, I'm at Commander Chrissy on Twitter. If you ever want to say hi, I don't bite, I promise. Uh, I do. On the, uh, I've been told I'm the baby face of wrestling Twitter, and um, I just approach life with love, kindness, positivity, and I'm hoping that uh, DJ Storms does not kill me today. <laughs> You're over. But, um, you're, wait, 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 wait. We're, cool. we're chatting cool. over Skype for a YouTube-related channel. How can I kill you? I don't know. Kill me with words. Kill me with kindness. I don't know. Whichever one you want to oh, do. Oh, God. No, now, <laughs> now we got Selena Gomez quotes. You see, you see, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. I coined yeah. this. I coined this. If there was ever did an anti- Did you say it before she did? What? Did you say it before she did? Because if you did, No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I'm not talking about that, Chrissy. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, people- if there was ever an anti-Storms, her name would be Chrissy. I swear to God, man. It is it is unreal. But regardless, regardless of that, uh, we are going to talk about... Technically, it's two reports, but it's they're both connected. And I'm going to start off... I have a lot of things I want to say about this, so, you know, strap in. And then I'm gonna hand it. I'm gonna hand the ball over to Chrissy. And after I'm done talking, then she will give her expertise analysis on these specific reports. This video is probably going an hour, so you know, strap in, people. All right. So the report or reports that I have: Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Live reported that WWE morale backstage is the worst it's ever been. Cage Side Seats also confirmed this. Now, the reason why I say this is because I also have another report, and a lot of you may have already heard this because the news broke, I believe, on Tuesday of this week. Wade Keller's pro wrestling post show had a close friend of three WWE writers call into his show after Raw, and he pretty much confirmed the lack of morale backstage with report after report after report that only furthers our statements about Vince McMahon to be true. Now, before I read what I am about to read, I want to let you guys in on some here. I am going to absolutely go off on anyone that denies these reports, number one. Number two, I am never, ever, from here on out, going to ever bash WWE Creative again. I will direct all my anger and frustrations towards Vince McMahon. And here's the thing. I picked out the key reports, the key reports that pretty much confirm the lack of morale backstage. And I quote, the close friend had to say, these things. Quote number one. WWE's problems are not the fault of the writers. No one should rip on WWE creative. They have some of the most brilliant, unbelievable, cool ideas that I've ever heard. He was told, we're writing for an audience of one. 
and never forget that. And if not, you're out of here. Next quote. The most frustrated person in the back every single night is Triple H. He'll always take, especially the NXT guys, under his wing. It looks like he's consoling them. It looks so much like he was the most frustrated person in the building every single night. Next quote. The wild card rule was not in the script, the morning of the show. Next quote, the superstar shakeup changed week to week and it didn't pan out how it was originally laid out months prior. Everything changed because Vince wanted to change it. Only confirming, now this is, this is, this last part's just me. This only confirms the lack of organization backstage in WWE, specifically on the main roster. This is where, this is where I was ready to flip over a fucking 18-wheeler like the fucking Hulk. Next quote. Vince is in the announcer's ears to a sentence, and he gets on them for tiny mistakes. Next quote. On Sami Zayn, that's not Sami Zayn's promos. That's Vince McMahon talking through Sami Zayn. And the final report that I have relates to Andrade. And I quote, Andrade went into Vince's office and asked for a legit push. Vince looked at him and said, learn some English and get back to me. Andrade spoke some English last week and he's been taking English lessons. Now, I don't want to say that I told you so, but I've been fucking telling you so, you bastards. I have been telling you for God knows how long. I have been telling you for God knows how long, and now, now this shit's only starting to come out. I am telling you right now. I, I don't even know, I don't even know where to fucking begin. I, I am like this close right now to taking this chair that I'm sitting on right now and throwing it out my fucking window to my left. I need to take a drink for a minute. Hang on a minute. I was going to say, sips of water, sips of water. Pace yourself. Pace yourself. Oh my God, no, 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 no. No, you, you're going you, let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you something right now. The, this, this right here, this may, this may be one of my biggest rants that I've ever done on my channel. First of all, first of all, first of all, how many people have said that WWE has been writing for an audience of one? I'm pretty much sure the entire fucking social media wrestling community has been saying that for God knows how long. God knows how long. And Andrade. Look, look at this. Andrade. Vince said, legitimately said, learn some English and get back to me. If that does not tell you how fucking stubborn Vince McMahon really is, I don't really know what to tell you in that aspect. Andrade was not pushed on the main roster because he couldn't speak English. Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? I'm telling you right what now. If he lends money in the bank. Well, he he's been a, taking a English favorite. lessons he's now. A... He's been taking English lessons now, so apparently now he's starting to get pushed. But the fact of the matter is that Andrade should have already been a champion on the main roster. Main, the main roster should have already given Andrade the United States Championship by now. I have no idea why the fuck they haven't. Now, we pretty much have our answer. Andrade was pushed in NXT by Triple H because of his pure talent, and they gave him Zelina Vega to give him a new lease on life and a new sense of direction in NXT, and all because he doesn't fucking speak English. All because he doesn't fucking speak English. Now. Now, 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 Vince McMahon just pretty much said, fuck you, learn some English, and then get back to me. And then, this doesn't even, this doesn't even compare. This doesn't even compare to Sami Zayn's fucking promos. This does not even compare to Sami Zayn's promos. This is pretty much the confirmation that we have been saying for God knows how long, but you know all these fucking idiots around the wrestling community, they, they, don't, they just don't want to admit it. Now you know why I shit on people. Now you know why I attack people. Now you guys know why I blatantly go after people on Twitter, on social media, because this is what you're supporting. This is what you're supporting. You're supporting a guy that 
takes one of his wrestlers, one of the most beloved wrestlers in Sami Zayn, who is loved because of his in-ring work and his underdog mentality, whether he's a face or a heel, you're using Sami Zayn to pretty much spit in the fucking face of your entire audience. You're pretty much saying, fuck you, WWE Universe. Seriously. And then on top of that, now he's down, he's in the announcer's ears and gets on them for tiny fucking mistakes, and yet you wonder why there's no morale backstage? Because of his fucking stubbornness. His fucking stubbornness and his ignorance is causing a lack of morale backstage. Who the fuck cares if they, if they mess up on tiny mistakes? Vince McMahon is in the announcer's ears right down to a sense that it has to be directly everything that Vince McMahon says and does or else, or else it's wrong. Vince McMahon is not God. This man needs a reality check sooner rather than later. And now, and now, and now, and now people are going to support this shit and say, Oh, well, if you don't like it, well, don't watch. Oh, if you don't like it, don't watch. So you're basically saying that it's okay for WWE to be lazy. It's okay for WWE to lack morale. It's okay for them to slap you in the face, spit in your face, and kick you in your figurative nuts every single week. You're okay with being treated like garbage. Because what you're watching is not good. I don't give a shit about your irrelevant, invalid opinions. The fact of the matter is, is that this shit is not right. This shit is not right. This shit is not good. And you are openly supporting this shit. This is what you're supporting. You're supporting a self-deluded, maniacal, selfish, stubborn bastard who has no no care and no regard for any of the superstars or any of his fans, who's pretty much torturing his son-in-law, how his son-in-law's busting his ass on 205 Live, NXT, and NXT UK to create these stars, and then when Vince McMahon brings them up to Raw and SmackDown, oh, just because he doesn't like them or he doesn't deem them worthy, now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they're placed off and, you know, thrown to the side, thrown in catering. Seriously. The people like Bo Dallas and Neville and Finn Balor and Samoa Joe who went through shit booking. People like, people like Ali and Cedric Alexander who are pretty much not, not even realistically being used right now. I don't even know. I, you know, it's only a matter of time before they give up on Ali. Sasha and Bailey, Ember Moon, Ember Moon, has been on the main roster for over a fucking year. And not She's one champion... She's been injured champion... twice. What? She's been injured twice. She's been injured twice. Oh, God. Regardless of her being injured... Body. Regardless of her being injured twice. She's been on the main roster for over a fucking year. And not one championship opportunity. Not one. I mean, do you realize how fucked up that is? Not one. Oh, oh my God. Top of that. Well, this lack- Sunday. What? Th- th- this Sunday, she has an opportunity, a great opportunity. Um, she is another favorite. Uh, you think I? Yeah, 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 maybe. But you think she I trust WWE at that. this rate? You really think I trust WWE at this rate when I hear reports like this shit? I'm telling you right now, if you support this shit. If you support this shit after everything that I just named, after everything that I just named, how Vince McMahon just constantly shuts down these creative ideas using Sami Zayn as a way to say fuck you to the audience. Meanwhile, we're paying our hard-earned money to watch this shit. Without the fans, the WWE company would be nothing. We're paying our hard-earned money to sit in those arenas for what WWE has Every single week, every show, every pay-per-view, and you're telling me it's okay for WWE to just give us the middle finger like that and say, yeah, fuck you, we're going to spit in your face because we're going to spit in your face because Vince McMahon doesn't want us to actually listen to you. This is a two-way street. It is a two-way fucking street, people. We give our hard-earned money. WWE is fucking obliged. WWE is fucking, is basically... Told you are based. WWE has a fucking job to give us good shit because we are giving them what they want. Meanwhile, they don't give us what we want. But yeah, you wonder why I complain. You're wondering why I'm yelling. You're wondering why there's there's constant rant after rant after rant after rant by constant podcasters and social media people and YouTubers in the wrestling community. This is why. 
This is exactly why there is problems within the WWE. This is exactly why there's problems within the wrestling community. And if you support, if you support anything that WWE does, if you support anything that Vince McMahon does, I have absolutely zero fucking respect for you. And I, I'm, I'm going to reiterate this and repeat this until the day that I pass away. If you support these types of decisions and you support Vince McMahon after everything that I just named, the lack of morale, the lack of effort, and the blatant fucking disrespect that WWE gives its fan base on a week-to-week -week basis. Oh, don't like it, don't watch. So it's okay for WWE to be lazy? It's okay for WWE to treat you like garbage? It's okay for you. You're basically saying it's okay to be in an, in an abusive relation, relationship without fucking saying jack shit. If you support these decisions made by WWE, if you support anything that WWE does, if you ever rag, if anyone ever fucking rags on me for complaining about this shit, I am telling you right now, you do not deserve the rights or privileges that we have in this life. Fucking spitting everywhere. God, if I sound, if I sound, sound, like, sound like fucking, sound like fucking, um, what's that, what's, what's that girl's name? Fucking Leona from Kids Next Door. Wow. I swear to God, man. Don't if anyone, this. if anyone supports this shit, you do not deserve the rights to life and the world the society and the community will be better when you are six feet under in a grave. I do not care. I do not. I have no remorse whatsoever for what I'm saying. When you, when when these fucking idiots, these fucking it's idiots that, that support deep, this shit, it's not that deep. this no no yes it is yes it is this deep. You want to claim everyone wants to claim how I'm over overly analyzing it. You're not fucking analyzing it enough. You're not looking deep enough into it. It is much more deep than anyone could ever imagine based on these fucking reports. I have the evidence written down on fucking pieces of paper. And I've read this shit. I've analyzed it. I've digested it. I'm telling you right now. Those who support this shit are the exact problem with society and the world. Stupidity does not deserve respect. And you will get no respect from me if you're fucking stupid. You want my respect? Be intelligent. You want my respect? Use your fucking brain. I'm telling you, I'm going to reiterate this time and time and time again until Vince McMahon steps down. If you support any, D any of these decisions made by Vince McMahon, if you are going to outwardly be the cancer, the cancer that makes WWE worse, and you are going to be the cancer of the wrestling community by denying people like me, you do not deserve the rights to life. You do not deserve the rights to social media. And when you pass away, 30, 40, 50, 60 years from now, I hope you live a long and luxurious life. But whenever you pass away, whenever you're called back up, the world is going to be a better place without your stupidity. And I have no remorse. I have absolutely no fucking remorse for what I just said. And I have no respect for anyone that denies the truth that is coming out of my mouth. And if you do, you can suck my testicles. I don't give a shit. I don't. I really do not give a shit. You can suck my testicles. I don't care. I am right. You fucking know it. You can't touch me. I got a thousand plus fucking subscribers. And there's nothing that you can fucking do about it. God! God, I hate this company, man. Alright, you know what? What, what, what time are we? Oh, no, I'm not okay. What time are we at? We're at like... Have you hydrated? Like, it's been like I am 10 drinking... minutes since we last drank one. <laughs> Proper hydration, I heard, is key. I don't know where I got that advice, but I heard it was a good idea. I All right, what, what, what are we at? We're at like almost 20 minutes. I don't know. I can't fucking see without my glasses, but I need to keep them off for a minute. All right, you know what? I am going to hand this over to Chrissy to talk about these reports and give her her thoughts and her expertise analysis on this because I am like, Absolutely. I am this close to having a fucking aneurysm on camera after this shit. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I just want to let you know, so <laughs> I'm, I just want to let everyone know that I meant every single word that I said. You don't deserve the rights to life if you're supporting this shit. You are a fucking disease. You are fucking AIDS to the community. Chrissy, go ahead. Say, go ahead. The floor is yours. You could talk for however long you want, and I'm going to try and calm myself down before I, 
uh, turn into a seven foot tall green muscle man. Oh man, banner is out. Hulk is in. All right. Um, praying for you, DJ. Uh, keep hydrated. You know, remember to breathe deep breaths in and out, in and out. Um, I have a couple of thoughts, um, uh, not to be oppositional or contrary to your line of thinking. Um, just a few thoughts while we're reading these, because, you know, it's very easy as, as you are to get very upset because you're very compassionate. You're saying, you know, look at all this hard work, look at all of this effort being put in by the talent, by the team and, and look what is coming out of it. You know, they're being tossed away, tossed to the side, um, for the most part, until I get confirmation from Fightful or Fightful Select, uh, a great team with Sean Ross Sapp, um, a lot of great writers, a lot of people that do their follow-up and their research, I, I at first will take this a bit reticently. I don't deny it at all. Like You can see several... Um, several indicators that these are you know may i wouldn't say close to the truth and the truth but you can see indicators where okay that's plausible that seems like it very well could be the case you see it in the booking um you see it in the writing you see it in the last minute decisions um you, you see it uh with with the talent um vocally unhappy on on social media in some cases um, you hit on something that I can absolutely agree with. You, you call it mediocrity. Um, and um, Pure mediocrity. I think, yeah, mediocrity. Uh, if that's a word, I feel like it isn't. You ever have those moments where you like say words like bowl it is, and you're like, is that is, a word? It is a word. Is Look word? it up. It is a <laughs> word. I yeah. do my research. Thank you. Uh, complacency. Um, with some talent. Um, I don't know if this is okay or right to, to bring up. I feel there is a sense with some people, based on interviews from superstars themselves, that some people are complacent in their position. They go in, they get a paycheck, they go home, they do what they're told, they're okay. And as you said, complacency for some is not okay. And It's never it's not, okay. Complacency not, is never okay. Palatable. Um, there, there's some talent that is, you know, okay with, you know, maybe sitting in the back, sitting and catering, doing what they're told, maybe not striving or saying, Hey, I deserve this. Hey, I deserve that. And pushing for that. And those that actively do, you, you, you see what happens in some cases, um, this is not to rag on any superstar in the company. They are hardworking. I could never, ever do what they do on a daily basis. The European tour is a, uh, the UK tour is a perfect example. It's two straight weeks. Um, some of them get a week and a week break. It's uh, travel, gym, job, travel, gym, the show, travel, gym, the show. And in between, you got to find a way to eat. So uh, as you said earlier in the show, um, it's it's never, I guess, disparity or anger directed towards the talent who is doing all that you believe they could. Unless they and can't the wrestle. the creative team that is putting all of their efforts into it for maybe one or two people. But I can't say I, I know the answer to this. I can't definitively say because the solution that most people present is also an unknown. The solution that most people present is when... When Vince McMahon steps down and Triple H steps up, everything will be better because of the examples of 205 Live, NXT, NXT UK, which are absolutely fantastic shows. But there is a discrepancy that I don't think many people, many people either recognize or acknowledge. Those shows are, you know, pre-taped. Um, with the exception of 205, I believe, uh, those shows do not have the length of a Raw or a SmackDown. Those shows do not have the amount of um, the amount of content, promotion-wise, storyline-wise. Um, it's pure wrestling, and it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, not really. There's a lot you know, of there's I, a lot I, of I good storylines, though. There's a lot of storylines to go into 205 Live, NXT, and NXT UK. And especially on 205 Live with a depleted roster, a depleted roster like 205 Live, and they got multiple storylines, and every single one of them is better 
than the storylines on Raw and SmackDown, you would think that with the promotion ability and the sponsorships that WWE has on Raw and SmackDown, that you would think that that it would in turn make them better and make them try harder because you want you want to keep those sponsorships happy. But here's the deal. You take a look at NXT UK, NXT and 205 Live, and there's really nothing out of the ordinary that's taboo or non-PG or overly convoluted. It's it's straightforward, it's simple, and it's to the point. Yeah. But you yeah, see me, well, you look you look at r- fucking Raw and SmackDown. You look at Raw and SmackDown and it's overly fucking convoluted. It's all over the place. Barely anything fucking makes sense. And sometimes the wrestling isn't even that good. So why so why why are we not to believe that Triple H is going mm-hmm. to improve? Why are we not why I, I, I say I say that not as a person that disagrees. I say that as a person that um you know, I, I walk in with the unknown. With this is the unknown. We never have seen um, him run Raw or SmackDown. If I'm not mistaken, <coughs> he's the head of creative. So that leads me to question. He's pretty much run, he running has... his own version of Monday Night Raw because you combined NXT, you combined mm-hmm. NXT UK, and you combined 205 Live. That's three hours of content right there. That is three mm-hmm. hours of content right there. Versus yeah. three three hours of Monday Night Raw versus three hours content right there, and one's run by Vince, one is run by Triple H. So you know you could pretty much balance it out there. Yeah. Um, I I also see a few things if I may note. Um, uh, he has, in my opinion, his his guys. I see you know Seth Rollins as his guy, Roman Reigns as his guy. Um, two talent. You know I don't you know, could necessarily have comment on. Um, but I, I feel he falls into similar habits, similar with the women's revolution. Um, I said this last night, his, his comments sometimes sound as if whether they're accurate or not. I, if I put you on my show, I make you a superstar. And to me, that kind of is a, a lash back at their own talent, at their own ability, at their own efforts to make themselves, um, aside from, like I said, him having his guys and, you know, he liked Ronda. He brought her here. He brought her in and to see, for me, what felt like a year of the Raw women's title being held hostage um, when I think of a WWE with Triple H as the head, uh, my concern is, will this actually truly genuinely be changed or will it seem great for a minute and he will fall into the habits of what he believed worked or what he believed was the formula that his stepdad used, you know, when there's fan lash back, backlash or um, he gets complacent or gets tired. If he's the most frustrated um, person backstage, according to this report, I doubt it. I don't I, I don't know the... I don't want to say I don't know the validity of that statement because he has liked things on social media that suggest he can be frustrated. Exactly. I, I don't ever I don't ever want to assume anybody's feelings. That's why I say that that but that that that's pretty much the proof though. Actually. That's pretty much the proof though. <clears throat> yeah. Um I I think he is in a very difficult position. Uh you know, when you hear a lot of the times he, you know, fights backstage for certain talent that, uh, you know, he wanted Oscar in a certain position, um, you, that you hear in interviews that they call him the pop uh, H or they see him as a father figure in NXT. Um, definitely that, that feeds into it. As I said, you can see some of that with the, the talent and their reverence towards him. I, as I said, I just have a concern that, you know, it could be we see this as a saving grace and it could just be, more of the same because to me he exhibits patterns of having his favorites and um yeah but his favorites are also our favorites that's the difference vince mcmahon's favorites are not our favorites at all yeah it's hard though because seth rollins seth rollins being triple h's favorite versus roman reigns being vince mcmahon's favorite you could pretty much it's self-explanatory but everybody, you know, at last year around this time, everybody was on the Seth train. Everybody was ready to put the title on him around SummerSlam, and that hype died a little bit. I can see. You, you know, know, you know why it died? Run. 
But do you know why it died? You know why it died? It died because WWE didn't put any effort into fucking Rollins, and they forced Roman Reigns into into the position at SummerSlam to beat Brock Lesnar when the majority of the people didn't want it. And then the majority of the people pretty much lost faith in Seth because they made Seth fucking Roman Reigns' butt puppet in the shield during that little fantasy run before Roman Reigns came down with the real-life case of leukemia. That's why. Yeah, uh, Roman Roman is one of their guys. I will, I will never, like... Claim to understand it or no? Um, I don't know if it's the look. Uh, he has a work ethic. Um, the they fucking, repeatedly the said flop. he has a work ethic. Uh, I don't want to comment too deep into it. Um, just not with me at least. That he he is their pick and he has a work ethic. They like that's about it. Um, it's not about the work ethic. I I don't I don't know the I don't know the original plans. What were going to happen? Um, it's I don't not about his work ethic, though. Versus... The, the reason why... I'm the, so sorry. The reason, I'm so sorry, I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat yourself? It's not about the work ethic. The reason why mm-hmm. Vince McMahon is continuing to push Roman Reigns is because he's fucking stubborn, and he just can't admit that Roman Reigns, as a babyface and as the face of the company, is one of the biggest flops that that company has ever produced. That is the problem. I'm not denying the man's work ethic... Everyone, a lot of people most likely backstage has a good work ethic, and he's probably one of them, and that's good on him. That's good on him as a man, that is good on him as a human being, that is good on him as a professional, and I respect him as a professional, but the fact of the matter is, is that it doesn't matter how good his work ethic is, it doesn't matter how good of a man he is, and most likely he's probably the nicest man that one could find, and I could probably see myself with him having a few slices of pizza, drinking a, drinking a Sprite, a and beer, watching... Beer. Oh, a Sprite. Oh, we're good. We're good. Sprite. I, I'm we're straight Sprite. edge. I'm straight edge, so I don't drink. That's wonderful. Yeah, I'm straight edge. I don't drink. But regardless of that... Maybe a bottle of water. I, I'm way ahead of you. But regar- you go, King. regardless of that, regardless of that, doesn't matter how nice the man is, it doesn't matter how good of a person the man is, and he's probably a good guy, but the fact of the matter is is that his character and his booking flopped. It has flopped since 2015. It is continuing to flop. He's not a ratings grab. He's not a draw. The only thing that he has is his merch sales. And merch sales are a small percentage of WWE's earnings that literally amount next to nothing. Roman ain't ringing in the sponsorships. People aren't wanting to sponsor WWE because of Roman Reigns. The sponsorships want to sponsor WWE because WWE is such a global-wide company that... Any type of sponsorship would be lucky to sponsor WWE to get their name out there. That's number one. Number two, Roman Reigns ain't ringing in ticket sales. If Roman Reigns was ringing, Snickers got the bag. Snickers got the money. Exactly. Well, if Roman Reigns, if Roman Reigns was ringing in the ticket sales, then then the O2 Arena wouldn't have been half empty in the upper bleachers. Then yeah, yeah, I saw the photos. So Roman ain't a draw. Smackdown, Smackdown last year, they could <coughs> show you pictures of the empty seats when AJ Styles was doing promos. Um, yeah, I know. Ticket I know. sales for house shows. Ticket sales for house shows have always reflected that, though. They've never like denied that it's hard to get, especially after pay per views, to get butts and seats for a Smackdown Live. It's just the Here's day. The- um, it's it's a lengthy weekend. Part so of it. Part of it. And then, no, the reason why last year, the reason why last year they were have they were struggling with empty seats is because of their lack of creativity. There are certain types of people, there are certain types of people that are ratings killers. Roman Reigns is a certified ratings killer. SmackDown Live WWE Champion was AJ Styles. No one, well, actually a lot of people blame. I don't don't like to use one person as a ratings argument because then you say AJ Styles is the reason SmackDown Live. No, 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 that's completely different. That's completely different because around that time, that's not. Because around that time, Around that time, the shows around that time as a whole were not doing good. The quality is, at some point, most of the time, most of the time, I'm not saying all the time, but most of the time, it is the overall quality of the show that sucks. Sometimes, it's single people. Roman Reigns is one of those single people. Another person was Jinder Mahal, because Jinder Mahal single-handedly killed SmackDown in 2017 as the WWE Champion. Some people are ratings killers. Jinder, Roman, Lashley, The Iconics, Nia Jax, 
Baron Corbin, ratings killers. You can just look at them and you can sense, you can sense the overall presence and the feedback on social media. Those types of people are ratings killers. There is no such thing as a huge ratings grab nowadays, maybe for two seconds, maybe for two seconds if a major star is returning, maybe you'll get 500,000 people tuning into Monday Night Raw because The Undertaker's returning, 500,000 fucking idiotic casuals returning, uh, returning to watch Raw because The Undertaker's returning, but that's about it. There are more ratings killers nowadays than there are ratings grabs. Roman Reigns is one of them. As far as the AJ Styles incident goes, that is different because during that time, Styles as a whole was not booked like a fun or interesting oh, I champion. Don't, I, don't, I don't blame either one of them. I just presented it as um, no one... I don't want to say no one because some people will say AJ Styles' reign they believe was, was boring and well, bland. No, 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 no. It was, it was boring. Trust me. It was boring to a certain um, extent. But that but was on WWE. They, they call... They call one one side of ratings killer, and then on the SmackDown side, you you hear, oh well, the product wasn't good. Yeah, um, it is. That's I the truth. Think, I just That's think the, the product wasn't good is a reason why ratings would go down. As it's a whole. the truth, I though. I don't see one person is a draw, but that's just a that's just my opinion. That's just how I see it. The problem <laughs> is, is that the problem is, is that Roman Reigns is a ratings killer because of WWE shit booking. That's the reason why he's a ratings killer. The reason why people are in the position that are that they are in right now is because of WWE's shit booking on Vince McMahon's behalf. I will give an example. Baron Corbin. The guy, the guy is a good wrestler. The guy's a good wrestler. I was once a fan of Baron Corbin, and to a certain extent I still am, and I want better for Baron Corbin, but this entire character that they have Baron Corbin portraying is in turn ruining him, it ruined his presence, and it made him someone that the universe doesn't want to see, and in turn, they give Baron Corbin go-away heat, which in turn makes Baron Corbin a complete fucking failure. That's the reason, that, that is the reason why someone like Roman Reigns would be considered a ratings killer, because of WWE's shit booking, because they booked Roman Reigns into a position in which his overall presence does not generate any interest whatsoever. You, you need, like, here's the deal. People need to use their fucking head and they need to realize what what is the fault of the overall quality and what's the fault of a ratings killer. Roman is a ratings killer. The reason why WWE as a whole right now is suffering is because of the overall quality of the product. But a certain show, a certain show here and there, like, uh, like uh, I'll give you an example. Last year, Monday Night Raw suffered suffered seven of its lowest rated episodes in the history of its of its uh, product. Three out of seven of those lowest rated episodes had Roman Reigns in the main event program. This was before he got leukemia, when the go-away heat was at its all-time high. Proof's in the pudding. Um, if I may speak, uh, I tweeted, yes. I think earlier this week, I don't know if it was yesterday, um, sometimes I forget what day it is. Happy Friday, everybody. Yeah, happy Friday. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, some factors are, you know, I consider, I don't know everything, but sometimes in hindsight, you say, oh, well, that's why that happened. Um, when when uh, there's a week where Ember Moon is in a match or a match gets cut, you're <coughs> like, why? That was so stupid. That was so dumb. Fucking and you throwbacks. find out X is injured. X got sick. Um, X walked out. Um, you have to hear about, oh, X walked in. You know, and you hear rumors that uh, they said, you know, push me or I'm walking out the door. And then dirt sheets, you know, report on it. And you hear contract extensions, um, you know, people sitting out their contracts or people leaving their contracts because they said, hey, I want this. You know, they couldn't come to an agreement and they decided, oh, I'm just going to leave. It's um, it's something that I think of when. You know, when I consider uh, the product, aside from, like I said earlier, uh, imagine, I couldn't imagine being a writer having to juggle all of that before a show, uh, juggle a million ideas that I have in my head that, as you read in the report, may, I, I could see being true, um, you know, having an audience that may just shoot your idea down. And then on one. top of that, having someone 
take your decision and say, okay, we're going to do it. Then maybe an hour before you guys go to air, say, nah, I changed my mind. Like, I couldn't imagine being in that position. So when I see certain things and I think it's like something's weird going on, that now is something in the back of my head. Like, maybe something went on. Um, I did tell you yesterday a story of when I was at the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania that it appeared to be very, very odd to see uh, Bailey take on Alexa Bliss. I had um, no idea why that match was happening. Uh, in hindsight, it looks like it was, you know, uh, give a match for Alexa to look strong, regardless of how I feel about that, um, and then ship her off to SmackDown. But, uh, you know, the mannerisms uh, before and after the match, the gestures seemed a bit odd. Uh, you know, Alexa was waving for someone to come out. I felt like there was a ref cue for someone not to come out. Um, and uh, I thought the match had an interesting pace um, and some interesting developments during the match. And I would like to think that that's reflective of things change, plans change. And plans change has been pretty much my motto for the last month, considering um, all the all the workarounds, all the problems. Uh, another example is the shakeup. There was a lot of issues with people being sick or travel issues during the shakeup, which had them on the fly have to switch some of their plans of who's going where, and then having to having to do it for the month to try to create some sort of semblance of balance. In my opinion, because. Raw kind of got raided. Once they took Bailey, it was over for me. And then they took Finn, and I was like, it's definitely over. Um, but in, in all No honesty, personal bias here. Raw got... Uh, I felt Raw got raided, um, but SmackDown, I, um, I yeah, genuinely Yeah, because your two faves went to draft. SmackDown, that's why. No, no, no. Uh, when I saw SmackDown, I thought they got raided of the tag team division. After, I felt, um, where is the SmackDown tag team division at uh with with raw i felt they had a strong women's division um they that got taken away from them um and they earned a strong male mid card but in terms of the meat and the bulk and the fat um i felt that they as i said got got rated that they got scalped of a lot of talent raw and smackdown got a, a lot of good picks but i felt that there was a large imbalance there's no there's no um real deep talent pool for the men's tag team division on smackdown so this wild card tries or makes attempts to keep the balance and i can understand people being frustrated with um the re repetition of a lot of talent. I kind of have three talent, three WWE superstars that in my head, uh, I nicknamed uh, Three Man Bland. That was a term from a friend. Uh, it's it's hard to see some some of the repetition. Uh, it kind of you kind of skip over it when you watch, or you're doing laundry or doing dishes when you watch, mm -hmm. because it does get it does get tedious at times. Um, there's flashes of brilliance. Uh, Sami Zayn on my TV is always a plus. And you, you see him a lot now lately on both, both brands. Yeah, but again, like that's what You'll I was telling Roman you. A lot on both that's what brands. I was telling you about Z Sammy. Vince is using a beloved superstar in Sami Zayn to pretty much say "fuck you" to the WWE universe. I mean, like some of the WWE, some of the WWE superstars share, share similar sentiments. If I can. If I can bring you to just Sasha Banks' tweets today, uh, they hear the craziest things about them on the dirt sheets, which makes me so reluctant to say, oh, yeah, this is true, or oh, yeah, this isn't true, because they hear some of the craziest things about themselves, and people say, you know, we learned it from the internet, and they hear they are in a bubble of their own. And, and that dirt sheet that or that article that you're reading yourself says that, you know, Vince McMahon keeps to himself and he finds out news differently than other people. A lot of the talent don't see everything that goes on, but they still exist in social media. So sometimes they don't hear the, what the dirty say 
they hear what their fans say and fans ask them odd questions and they say, you know, where did you get this from? And people say the internet and they're like, that never happened. It, there's a lot, been a lot of that this year where they've been taken aback by uh, by what dirt sheets have said or reported as true and there's been really no follow up and we just blindly trusted it and then you come to find out maybe a year later it wasn't true and why I hold everything with a grain of salt is because we all thought that that Brock story was fake where he threw the title evidence and then a year later, we see the video of it. So it's 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 very uh, very choppy waters to tread when um, people report on things because we don't know the sources and we don't know the motivations of these sources. I've been treading on choppy water was... for two years. I've been it, treading it, on choppy water for two years. It's been your job for two years, you said? I'm I've been treading sorry. on choppy water for two years, and you know what? I've gotten a thousand subs, so... Are, are, are you surfing now? Are you yes, surfing yes, surfing I am. Board? Yes, I uh, am. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I am. I'm like the forward. dynamic dudes. Remember John Laurinaitis, the dynamic dudes? I try to forget that because he has the voice of a cigarette smoker. And My I'm name is Mr. Like John Laurinaitis, and I am the executive I'm... senior vice president of talent relations. I can't do it. People power, people power, dude. People power is the best. It's people power. People fuck, power. Fuck this water yeah. bottle. Um, you know, as I said, um, I, I can see it being true. I, I just don't want to say, oh yeah, this is this is absolutely true. This was going on because, um, just like in real life, like a game of telephone, I tell someone something, and and they're like, oh, that's the greatest thing ever. Let me go tell someone, and they mix it a little up to tell somebody else. Um, and maybe the original intent, there's a bit of truth to it, but because of who's saying it and their own motives and their own agenda gets passed along, the message gets a little muddled. Like, you know, you don't know if this person was someone who got fired, who has a vendetta. We don't know if this is, you know, I don't know, a competitor. I, w- I would like to think that it was not anything of that nature. Um, we don't know if this was someone who just got drunk and played Marvin's room and called up and was like, I'm going to spill all the tea. Um, we don't know who, who these sources are for me to say absolutely legit. What I try to take at their word is the talent when they speak up, because as I've said, much of them, when they hear these things, they are in their own sort of bubble where they don't hear everything that's said. But when it is presented to them, they say, okay, like, you know, either I've heard of this and I'll deny it, you know, accept it. Or they say, like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And do I have a feeling that WWE plays into that? Like dirt sheets and us clamoring and searching and researching and analyzing and overanalyzing? Absolutely. I think they could see some money in that and maybe... Throw a little fake news out there. Throw a little fake news out there. If you say, if you saw the revival um, around the time of Fastlane and the tag team titles and their journey to the tag team titles, you definitely get a feel that that was kind of Vince's jab or creative or WWE. I, I wouldn't know who to assign a uh, jab at. Oh, don't listen to the dirt sheets because. They're not a thousand percent accurate. Um, they can be wrong. Um, and sometimes you get riled up and you think that something is absolutely true. And then, like I said, it could take a whole year to hear that's not even what happened. And then maybe it could take a whole year and it was exactly what happened. That's why I am I'm usually 50 50 when I hear something. <laughs> Especially after that rock story, I was like, okay, maybe I can't deny everything. I can't. Hypothetically can't speaking, that, that, that can't be true. Hypothetically speaking, let's say it's true. What are your thoughts about yeah. it as we're approaching 50 minutes? I uh, absolutely can see it being true. Absolutely can see it with um, hearing the news of writers being fired or writers quitting, um, the Hall of Fame story uh, that uh, with Vince and the gentleman that I believe, please uh, don't eviscerate me if this is a misquote, said to him, I hope you you learned from this. 
you, you can sense there is frustration. Mm-hmm. I, I can't say that everyone feels the same way. I can't speak for anyone and how they feel. I can definitely understand that their company has always been described by every member of it as cutthroat, difficult. You don't have to just be mentally, uh, sorry, physically strong to survive in it. But mentally, as a superstar, as a writer, as a producer, uh, I can absolutely see it, you know, being um, very competitive, very, uh, you know, not not what meets the eye, um, very demanding, uh, high stress. Uh, you, uh, we saw Road Dog. Um, I believe he resigned, and I think he's working at the the Performance Center. I don't know if he's currently working with NXT. I don't know if he's working uh, with WWE at all anymore. I, I saw him uh, in a picture. Uh, he tagged a picture with Johnny Gargano. So I believed he was in some form either working with the PC or NXT. You can absolutely correct me or fact check me because I'm infallible. I absolutely can be wrong at times. And if I am ever wrong, I always like to admit it because I'm a human being. Um, I'm prone to mistake. You're fine. I, I, I don't like to misinform or mislead anybody. And I like to say my opinions are my own. I hold them. I think many people can... Uh, relate to those sentiments and if if you don't if you're like fuck you you're wrong I'm, I'm cool with you I get it I get the resentment I can get the outrage in response to this um, because you guys feel compassion towards a lot of hard working people like I said I can see it coming from yeah. a place of love and a place of care um, and I was one of those people that was like if you don't like it, don't watch. And I'd be like, but I do want it to be better. When you love something, you you want it to be better, and you you fight for it, and you say, hey, like this is wrong. Y'all need to fix it. Um, and I don't want to hear anyone I, ever use that "don't like it, don't watch" excuse ever again, I, uh, or else I am I, going I, I to fucking rip you apart. I'm just I warning. genuinely give it. I just genuinely give it a chance because I feel that there have been efforts not not everything is perfect to me absolutely not i think there's some dreadful parts i think there's some parts that that hit for me yeah. uh, i feel like there's there's been an effort when i saw wrestlemania and i went in like either none of these people are win or two out of three but they're definitely not giving us kofi mania becky lynch and seth rollins walking out and you go in and you walk out kofi mania is alive Yo, know, Becky two belts and Seth Seth Rollins is the beast slayer. Um That was a shock. I feel that that was, that was an attempt to make a fan base happy. I feel that that was an attempt to say that was a start. Okay, we we hear you and we're trying to make things better. I kind of try to watch it like like Game of Thrones now or like not everything's going to make I was me waiting happy for a Game because... of Thrones reference. I was waiting for that cuz like you were like marking Every... out over that. On Twitter. Well, it, 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 cause the, the quote always stuck with me, especially with wrestling. Um, you know, if you think this show is about happy endings, like it, it's not, not everything's going to be a happy ending. Uh, WrestleMania, I always look forward to being disappointed. And this year it did not, it did not fail me. <laughs> Suppose... I only had one match. I only had one match I was like supremely looking forward to, and they lost. And security was like, "Is she gonna jump?" And I was like, "No." Oh I yeah, promise. Boston hug. Yeah. My, I was consoling my friend who was on live, sobering up. The match literally sobered him. He was like, "Wait a minute, what happened?" I was like, "Wait a minute, what happened?" And everyone's like, "What?" And I, I, yeah. I, I, was, I was legitimately I, I, I think I think we're going to have to end this because we don't want to get into drunk stories about no, WrestleMania no, no. too much. No, he was no, we were we were just sad, a, a bit distraught. Right. But so many of my friends and so many people I met at the event went home like extremely happy. There were people that came from all over the world to from Ireland, a lot of people to see uh Becky Lynch win in the main event. It was historic. I did leave crying because uh, regardless of how I felt about the match, the match quality, what it meant, women main eventing for the very first time, uh, history was made, and um, a lot of people went home happy. All right. It was raining 
four hours after, I don't know about the after, because I definitely was not happy after because four hours, I was soaking wet, took me that long to get home, but... Oh, yeah, that's right, because you live in right. Philly. <laughs> no, I, 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 um, I, I'm in... I'm in PA, but I went to New Jersey, and they stopped the buses at 10.30, and they didn't realize WrestleMania ended two hours later. See, that's, see, that's, see, that's why you got to drive via car. I didn't think about it. No, I you always got to think about it. Think so that. I, always <laughs> do not take public transportation unless you absolutely have to. That I think, I think that's where we're going to end it. Cause like I think yeah. we're yeah I think we're we're he's, he's giving me advice I've never been to a mania that was my very first WrestleMania and life lesson learned Uber was trying to charge us a hundred dollars yeah. to drive us a few blocks I was like my gosh yeah in the hungry. future when you come to Jersey for the Rescue Mania events to meet me <laughs> do not oh. take public transportation drive oh a car God. drive a car Chrissy drive a car. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I have to. I, I was like, after this, I was like, I don't think I could ever do that life again. All oh right. my God. No, no, you don't. It, ride with me. Ride with me, and trust me, you, you'll, you'll, um, you'll, it'll run smoothly. Trust me. Jersey's, okay. Jersey's my state. I own the state of New Jersey. Did you motherfucking storms? Okay. Anyway, okay. ladies and gentlemen, I think that wraps it up. I'm actually a lot more toned down. Chrissy was able to help. That's just her being a pure baby face. Help. How many bottles of water did you chug? Only one. But yeah! my throat is still killing me. <laughs> my throat is still killing me, though. But anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this edition of the Lightning Flash Update. That, that wraps up part two. I would like to thank each and every single one of you who tuned into this video. Um, smash that like button. Um, I want you to give me a thumbs up. Let's try and get this video to 10, 20 thumbs up. If you're going to give me a thumbs down, well, fuck you. Suck my balls, just like I said earlier on in the video. Suck my testicles if you're going to give me a thumbs down. Um, comment down below what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, tell Chrissy. Um, actually, um, what's your social media is again? Tell people your social um, media is. My Twitter is at Commander Chrissy. Um, you're very graphic. I don't want it. I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my uh, Twitter handle is at Commander Cursey. Much of my social media is at Commander Cursey. Um, I usually engage a lot on Twitter. I don't really have a YouTube and whatnot. But if you find me on there, you say, hey, I, I love engaging with other wrestling fans, no matter who they're fans of. No matter your thoughts, if you're kind and respectful, we can dance. If you're mean, um, I'll probably cry. I don't know. <laughs> Are you sure? Because, like, remember, you're the you're the one that came knocking on the devil's door with me, and then you ended up, even though the devil did wasn't I? even the devil. D did I? I? I feel as though you stepped to me, King, and you said, let's have a rap promo off. I, I no, 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 no. No. Are, are you saying no. you the warning shot? No. I, I think I did. I mean, we are I not. No, we're not I getting did. into a rap off. Uh, no, 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 no. No, I just, I just, I feel that that was said. Sorry, apparently someone decided to call me. So whoever decided to call me, um, big fuck you. You interrupted our video and you interrupted what we were saying. But anyway, um, follow me. Yeah. It was real. Yeah. <laughs> follow me on Twitter at Man of Infamy. Follow me on Instagram at the DJ Storms. Um, go check out the Lightning Flash update with Earl Cole last week. If you missed it, I'm going to post a link in the description. Um, the, the rundown for Money in the Bank, that is tomorrow. That is tomorrow. JB Thunder will be making his return, and we will be addressing the situation with YouTube discontinuing the video credits. Also, 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 uh, also. I, yeah. I feel bad. No, no, Can no. I get my Money in the Bank predictions? Uh, no, we're kind of, we're kind of running out of time, actually. Hey, if you Bailey want to... In the bank. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Um, I will have Chrissy on the channel in the future. I'll probably have her on for a storm stream because I she's actually one of my favorite guests. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> also, tomorrow is also Destined for Greatness at Lodi High School in Lodi, New Jersey. I'm going to be there. I already got my tickets. There's three Rescue Mania guys in the main event. It is Stockade versus Mike Orlando versus Darius Carter. I'm going to get good content for the channel. Um, also, if you... If you don't already know, today, later today on Facebook, later today on Facebook at 5 p.m., I'm going live on the Facebook 
Wrestling Express group page with Mr. Earl Cole himself, and we're going to do our Money in the Bank predictions. And then, uh, two days, in two days, at Pub 46 in Clifton, New Jersey, it is none other than the Wrestling Express meetup for Money in the Bank. I'm going to be there. Tommy McGrogan's going to be there. Glenn Davidson's going to be there. All the members of Wrestling Express are going to be there. You're off on Sunday, is that right, Chrissy? I am off on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Come on down to Jersey. Come on down to Pub 46. Chill with the members of Wrestling Express, man. I'll give you a free wristband. Get your kicks on Route 66. It's Pub 46, actually. Oop, get your kicks on Pub 46. 66? I don't know. I you, never you, we, we don't even know anymore. We're just rambling. We're like Rambling Rabbit from yeah. the Firefly Funhouse at this rate. But Oop, anyway. Rambling Rabbit, you are a real one. <laughs> indubitably. But anyway, I'm DJ Storms, she's Chrissy, this has been the Lightning Flash update for May 17th, 2019. Also, I posted the weekly show reviews the um, yesterday, actually. So the weekly show reviews, part one of the Lightning Flash update is actually up right now. I'll also post that link in the description. But ladies and gentlemen, she's Commander Chrissy, I'm the one and only DJ Storms. This has been the Lightning Flash update, we will catch you later.